In the Rage Talk studio. I've been... Instantly changes hairstyle. (laughs) Instantly grabs hair. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Just remember, while you're getting settled in, just remember that we are to remember... Just remember to remember that... I am not problematic. Okay, everybody. It's been said by our queen our Lord and Savior, Rachel Hollis, um, that she is not problematic. Now, she did delete that (laughs) from an entire podcast and uh, not state it. But, um, you know, when people say they're not problematic and then they delete that from said piece of content, that usually is an indication that they're problematic. (laughs) But that's what I wanted to lead in with today. Thank you, Martha. Welcome to the show. Um, I've been traveling the world traveling the world and by the world i mean northeast america northeast of the united states of america at least uh, the united states of which it is called as of today uh i've heard certain names being uh, thrown around for the the next phase of the united states of america gilead was one of them i don't know where i got that from but uh you know it's all possible all things are possible <laughs> with the American dream. Uh, Welcome. It's been, I did a mobile show on Cringefluencers on Thursday, no, on Friday, and that was the first time I ever went mobile uh, doing a live stream. So it was a success. Let me applause myself. Good job, past me. Um, So if I ever go away again, uh, potentially we we could take this thing on the road. We could take this thing, we could so meta, and not meta like Facebook meta, but like we could meditize this content. We could have this, we could bring the live show on the road on Rach Talk Live's tour somehow and uh, become a Rachie and follow her around. I'm not going to do that because that would probably incur stalking charges to the list of charges that they're probably penning right now. I'm just, when I say that, I'm joking. Slightly. Um, So if you haven't been around for a little bit, like myself, uh, there's a new video out on the channel. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did some editing while I was on the road. Um, And it's all about one of Rachel Hollis's uh, recommendations, book recommendations called You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. Um, If you have time and you want to kind of, Rachel says this is one of her favorite books and she not only read it multiple times, she ordered the audiobook and the print book because she loves it so much. (laughs) So, and that's a bold statement. Uh, And if you watch the review, you'll understand why, because it is insane uh, in my humble opinion. So I see everyone's coming in and commenting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have so much to catch up on. I didn't even know what to focus on because there's been so much. Um, last time we all chatted live was when Rachel posted 
this mysterious uh, podcast episode about social media anxiety. And then she deleted it a few hours later. And then on, so that was like on a Thursday. And then like four days later, posted it, taking like 17 minutes out of it. Some of the more juicier nuggets of information where she talks about Maya Angelou, where she talked about um, her interview with that performer, Andy Grammer. (laughs) That's his name. Uh, And, you know, having people seeing comments that saying she was problematic and she is, she is not problematic. I am not problematic. That's our girl, Rach. Um, So I figured we'll do a catch up episode. And what I want to play, the long, so usually I pick like one longer form content to uh, read or listen to. And so since I've been uh, MIA, I have not listened to yet. I have not heard it, um, but I can only imagine it's going to be great. Oh, thank you, Rebecca Romana. Romana? Romana? Uh, Says, Key is World, while I write Moon Knight fan fiction at 11 a.m.? Hell yeah. (laughs) What is moon, moon night fan fiction? That sounds really interesting. And it's a night spelled with a K. Go nights! Charge on. I want to be relatable. I want to be relatable like the night sky. My guardian angels, my spirit guides. My guardian angels, my spirit guides, my moon nights, whatever, wherever you are. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And thank you, Rebecca. Um, so we're going to listen to the things I hate about myself <laughs> by Rachel Hollis. Um, surprisingly, it's like the shortest episode she's put out in months. <laughs> uh, how to get a job, how to get promoted was like an hour and things I hate about myself is only 12 minutes and 48 minutes or 48 seconds. <laughs> ironically enough. Um, and I've sort of, uh, skimmed through some, or I read it on Reddit actually. Someone kind of gave the highlights and on Reddit, when I say that, in case you're new here, new in the Hollisville universe, uh, when I refer to, I saw it on Reddit, um, I mean Hollis Uncensored on Reddit. And if you haven't joined yet, you should join because it's almost at 10,000 members. And that's crazy because I was, I was OG. I was there from the beginning. I was in the blog snark getting my first amendment rights taken away <laughs> over on blog snark and uh in the Rachel Hollis Dave Hollis section and so the group reformed over on Hollis Uncensored where we had our rights restored <laughs> we could talk about them um so I was there from day one and now we would like to invite you it's not even my thing it's not my thing I have no no affiliation other than just being a member of it um but that's where, that's where I get a lot of my info and intel. So uh, join, and then they can hit 10K, and that'll be an exciting moment. Okay, so we're going to uh, listen to that. We're going to check in with Dave and Heidi. <laughs> Heidi continues to um, put her kids on blast, literally, disturbingly, in some cases. Uh, her child learned to ride a bike, thanks to Dave, and Dave is now super dad once again because I'm assuming uh, he's got a marketing plan to promote his children's book, which we've been anxiously awaiting for over a year. It was supposed to come out in February of 2022. No, yeah, <laughs> um, for Noah's birthday when she turned five. And now she's been five for like six months. So it's been delayed. <laughs> it's been delayed a couple times. And it looks like it's coming out November 8th. So let's just take a look, see. We'll, we'll, we'll decide which setup we like better. We like this one or we like this one. We might switch between. I'm just trying to mix it up, guys. I'm trying to mix it up. I'm trying to look like I'm on a phone here. So here we go. Here's to your dreams. A tea time with Noah book. As if there's going to be more. (laughs) Which I would be shocked, utterly shocked, um, if there was. If there was more. Uh, But yeah, over here, if you can see, right over there, with my pre-order, with one click, uh, it's $10 to pre-order. And um, it comes out November 8th. So right around the time, no, actually, Rach Talk Live will already be done by then. 
it may actually never start, <laughs> but we'll, we'll know for sure by then. Um, yeah. So, so there you go. You like this one? Do you like this setup? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, so I'm assuming his marketing plan to get this book, uh, which is so exciting and not illustrated by Dave, obviously just written by Dave, Dave, who is, uh, acting as an ally for the needs of children in his free time. Uh, he needs to pretend, I mean, sorry, he needs to portray that he is a super dad. And if we all remember, Dave took a break from social media for, for a while, like three months, full social media. Well, I say full social media break, full Instagram break on his own page. Now he was on Heidi's page and, you know, popping up there a lot. And he was also, um, in the community, which I have not heard about from either one, the get fit with Heidi and Dave community, which is now just the get fit community, which is also now the butterflies, our best community, which is also the show up community. I don't know. They got so many communities inside of, uh, their world. It's hard to keep up, but, um, yeah, I have, I haven't heard one peep about anything. So whatever. Anyways, that he was going live in there and stuff from within rehab inside of rehab. This is just all a recap. Anyways, he's back. He posted this weird, I'm, you know, fishing from 17 miles away. I'm not ready to come back. This was in May 7th. He was like preemptively saying like, I'm not ready to come back. I'm not ready to come back to social media guys. Give me grace. Give me time. I am human. I am divine. Uh, and then all of a sudden, boop, he was ready. June 19th. He's ready. He's back. He's back in action. He is so back. Uh, and especially showing off his children. That is what we're going to see with Dave from now on because he is a children's book author now. So from now on, don't play the music. Okay, good. Uh, okay. And this is also another one. I'm going to play it because it's literally on his page right now. What is the deal with posting Noah with no top on? At least she's facing away from the camera in this one compared to when Rachel posted her facing the camera and thought it was wonderful for 1.5 million people to see. Um, I don't understand. All the boys have shirts on. Like, again, I have no problem with you doing whatever you want to do in your household, in your lake. I'm sure this is like their own backyard. But why are we posting this stuff on the internet? Like, as social media influencers and experts, as they all claim to be, get your kid off the internet. I mean, generally off the internet, but definitely not in these clothing situations. I don't, I don't get it. And what, for once, again, Rachel, Rachel said, well, she's a toddler at the beach. First of all, she was in the house. This is, I'm talking about Rachel's picture now. Rachel, in the podcast where she, she talked about the social media anxiety, she defended posting Noah topless on her Instagram. I totally disagree with the premise at large, but this is her, this was her, um, defense was that she was a, to she's a toddler at the beach. Um, if it was a boy, no one would have a problem. And you know, it's so it's, it's just an innocent, you know, picture and people are just making a big deal out of it. First of all, she was in a house, so she wasn't at the beach. She was inside, she was facing the camera and she basically said, Oh, you can't even see who it is. It was like, she was so far out of the frame. And she's like, the full frame. Anyways, I'm just getting into semantics now, but like all of the excuses that Rachel gave were bullshit. We're not even true. And to me, that is like gaslighting by saying that she was at the beach and then seeing a picture of this girl in her home on the couch. It just, it's like, what are you even hearing yourself talk, Rachel? Anyway, so Dave followed up with that, with another topless image of Noah. So wonderful. Uh, then again, Noah is being used, you know, can be quite frank. She's being used in my opinion to obviously she's a, the star of this book. It's very unfortunate. She's going to be in all these pictures now, uh, because Dave is super dad. 
Dave is super dad. He is super author and his life is amazing. Look how amazing his life is. He even takes care of other people's children now. He's a safe guy. He's safe. You can trust him. You can buy his books. Okay, more children in the pool. This is really helpful for my self-development, Dave. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. I'm, I love seeing other people's children swimming in a pool. This is very good content, Dave. Appreciate it. I mean, I'm not even going to read. Exactly. Uh, to, I don't know. He's talking about his kids. It's just like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? And then more, more kids. Okay, they're off to summer camp. In case you wanted to know where to stalk his children, they're at summer camp. So there you go. And then some throwbacks. And surprisingly, here's a picture of Rachel. And like I said, I don't think he's, he's over Rachel. He's still showing pictures of her. One day, oh, one day, Rachel and Dave will get back together. I don't know. Maybe. Like I said, good marketing plan. Uh, that's basically it with Dave. Uh, for Dave's side of the world, we can talk about Heidi too, but um, I don't want to bury the lead here on the story, which is which is our girl Rach, and we're gonna uh, let's look at Rach talk too. Rach talk live. We need to just do get all of this housekeeping out of the way, um, because if we don't, then we'll be left hanging. Oh, thank you, Lucy Kemp. Lucy Kemp says, "What a treat for when I'm back from the pub." <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're back from the pub like you're back from Publix, you've been grocery shopping, or you're back from the pub like, well, I'm assuming since you're sending euros, that you're really back from the pub. And for that, I'm going to say... I will actually do something obscene for you. That's what they say at the pub, in my mind. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lucy. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so let me go back here for just one sec. And let's just just, just um, catch up with Rach real quick. Let's just catch up with Rach. Or go Rachy. Okay, so here's her Instagram. Um, I started listening to this podcast today about her facing her fears and whatever, and I was struggling to get through it. So I'll have to finish listening it, to it. I got through like halfway. I was bored out of my mind. Um, basically, the it's one of those, she's like, it's a Rach talk. Basically, it's like six different things like whatever I want to talk about. Yet she's not branding it Rach Talk because she's supposed to be vlogging, which she really hasn't been doing very much of that I can see this summer of vlogging. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like, guys, I have a fear. I have a fear of staying at luxury resorts and hotels. It's very scary for me. I have a phobia of chandeliers, but I'm going to face my fear for you guys to be an inspiration for you. And I'm going to go and stay at the Ritz for seven nights and six days for you. And that was the vibe I got because she's like, I have a fear of water and of, of taking, you know, going through adventures. It's like, you know, Am I supposed to feel like inspired by this? Like, wow, oh my gosh, guys, like Rachel Hollis, if Rachel Hollis can, can go on an excursion in Hawaii, like I can do anything. <laughs> and of course she talked about it while she was talking about how she, you know, overcame this limiting belief or whatever. Um, she was like, I, I have to challenge myself just like I challenged myself with running a marathon with no training. And I wrote a whole podcast about it. You should listen to it. It's on, it's on my podcast. So again, it's like these, how you know we talk about manufactured authenticity, like it's making up things that you're embarrassed about, like in girl, wash your face, or I think it was girl, wash your face, or was it girl, stop apologizing. I don't know. They all blend together at this point. She's like, guys, I shave my toes. I know. I know. Embarrassing. So embarrassing. Like, that's the type of thing. Like, it's, no one really cares. <laughs> and the fact that she's, like, admitting this, that it's a sensitive subject for her, it's almost like, see, I'm just like you. And same thing. It's like, wow. She, she you know, got over her fear of, of seeing a shark in Hawaii. Wow. That's a real thing to be scared of. It's like, I get it. I'd be scared too, but I'm not inspired. 
I ain't inspired. Um, what else? Okay. And then this was from, and this is sort of an update, like a, this is not her update, but she went to Portland to meet up with her boo thing. Boo thing was met up with. Hold on. Boo thing. Boo thing was in Portland. So she, she's like, I hate Hawaii now, actually. I actually just love my boyfriend. (laughs) And she's like, I'm going to go meet up with him. And her boo thing, if we didn't know already, is Sean Mendez's tour manager. However, <laughs> Sean Mendez has just announced he's stepping away from his tour due to his mental health. So I find that interesting. Uh, I don't know what, I guess maybe that means that uh, her boo thing is going to be available and is now going to be touring with Rach Talk Live, uh, perhaps. Um, but this was posted before that. So she was, and she's like, my friend is going on tour. So I guess she considers Sean Mendez a friend these days, which, you know, cool, <laughs> I guess. I'm not going to lie. I don't think I would bury that if I was besties with Sean Mendez. Um, and then I don't know if we talked about this. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, but she did make a statement about Roe versus Wade and that she was devastated. And then um, a lot of her followers were not happy with that and they also were not happy with her lgbtq plus uh post we already talked about that but um you know i want to give her credit where credit's due i'm on the same side of as her of being extremely disappointed uh in the ruling um i think it's horrendous and a sign of not good things to come so the fact that she said something i will give her credit however i do always question everything she does because it seems to be very calculated um so i wonder if she saw her low ticket sales and and now is more empowered to be controversial because being neutral didn't get her anywhere and then she can also blame some of the sales slump on oh well i took a stand and now everyone hates me it's like "Mm, okay that's not really what happened but Regardless, I'd rather her be on this side of things than on the opposite side. And the fact that her followers are like so against this is like weird to me. (laughs) Okay. Female empowerment, except when we tell you what to do, then, you know, then it's all forget empowerment. Then we're going to, men are going to empower you. Woo! Let's do a conference about telling men what to tell women to do. That's a conference I want to go to. Um, So that's her. Okay, but now we're going to go to her link tree. And let's do Rage Talk Live. Okay, once again, her very, very simple website. Um, And let's just, let's go to the first one because obviously the first one is (laughs) coming up soon, coming up first. Um, And let's just do Birmingham, Alabama, September 30th. Let's see how things are going. Okay, so you can still buy tickets. It's not sold out. All the blue dots are available. All the stars are VIP that's available. So it ain't looking so good. It ain't looking so good. I'm not going to count them, but that may be 100. I always say 100 when it's like 50. But, you know, nothing in the rafters. Uh, There's like, you know, in the middle there's some, but the VIP looks very empty. There's like 5, 10, 15. There's a whole back row. I don't know, maybe 15 VIPs. And then there's like, I don't know, 50 people. So, okay, uh, audience is 75. Just get a smaller venue, girl. Girl, stop booking big venues. I just don't think she can grasp that, like, she is no longer the Rachel Hollis of 2018. You know, like, they were selling out arenas, and I just don't, I don't know why she's, she doesn't see that this, this is past, this, this moment is gone. Um, but let's just see Charleston. She's been to Charleston before. Maybe she's got more luck there. Mm. Mm. Smaller center, it looks like less luck once again more vip sold perhaps which is good uh for her but that's a pretty empty that's pretty empty Uh, so let me know what you think do you think it will continue rage talk live or will she cancel my prediction is that she will do it um 
because she did rise, the one that I went to virtually, she did it despite having to turn the arena into a intimate venue. Uh, and she did it. So, I mean, that's one thing I will give again to Rachel, positive points, sort of, not even positive, but like something I will never say about Rachel is that she does not give up. She does not give up. And if that's what you're going for in life, hey, she's got it. But sometimes you should give up to find something better (laughs) or more fulfilling or less embarrassing. But, you know, what do I know? I'm just a troll on the internet. I'm just a troll on the internet. What do I know? I'm a hater. Um, Speaking of haters, um, our girl Rach is famous for never reading comments. She just posts things and puts it out in the universe and then lets it fester. (laughs) Now, well, she says she never consumes comments, that it was too hard for her to consume comments, to respond. She's got too many people trying to get in touch with her she just she doesn't have time she wants to be a a stay-at-home mom with her bra off she doesn't have time however all of a sudden bam she's she's on youtube commenting (laughs) with no warning um so let's let's discuss that so uh let's see so this is from the first vlog now there's only been like two vlogs all summer it's already the middle of july but whatever um and it says, our, this is our first blog. We already watched this on a different live stream. And this is where they announced that Rach Talk Live was going live. And it has 30 comments. Okay, 8,000 views. I mean, pretty low, I would say. I, don't, I hate to say that because, like, if I got 8,000 views on something, I'm like, oh, that's good. <laughs> you know, yay for me. Um, so I don't want to make, I'm not saying, like, oh, my God. But I also have less subs, and she's a, you know, a multimillionaire girl boss. So if we're getting these views for her, and especially with 178K thousand or 178,000 subs, it's definitely low. Um, but I digress. Okay, so 30 comments, also low. Some are funny. This one's funny. Rachel Hollis, when life gave her lemonade, she made lemons. <laughs> Um, okay, then people are saying, I don't believe those were bought at a store. Okay, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so the, the one that's interesting is Rob Valletto. Of course, it <laughs> sounds like a man to me. Could be a they, could be a she, I don't know. But to me, Rob Valletto sounds like a man's name to me. And she decides, <laughs> forget women, I'm more of a guy's gal, which she has said before. She's like, I'm just a guy's gal. I like to drink whiskey or something, or rye or something. I like to drink whiskey with the boys at the golf links. I just like to putt-putt with my broskies. So, of course, she would, you know, comment on a man's post. And that also actually was put, pointed out to me by Heather the lawyer, who I saw was here in the beginning of the chat. Don't know if she's still here, but... Shout out Heather the lawyer, um, because she had a good uh, thought on that, that like, yeah, she would respond to a man. I'm like, that was a good insight. (laughs) So thank you for that. Okay, so Rob commented on this vlog and said, Rachel, I say this with complete respect, but the reason why I have a hard time with self-help and your content in particular is because of two reasons. One, you and David, (laughs) David Hollis, you and David sold relationship and marriage advice when you both admit to going through hard times that ended in divorce. I felt very misled. Two, you actually thought it was okay to call the person that cleans your home a woman. What the heck? Can I not finish it? A woman, dot, dot, dot. How can I? Okay, well, I have it on my phone. I wonder if he edited it. Edited it. Why can't I see it? Okay, I think that was continued. Uh, Because it said a woman who cleans... Hold on. A woman that cleans my toilets. This was so disrespectful. How could you not be aware of that? Please let me know if you can understand this point of view. With respect, Rob. Okay, that was the end. I have the screenshot. That was the end of the comment. Okay, and then she writes back, Rachel Hollis, 13 days ago. She doesn't read comments. Okay, now here she is. Hi, Rob. Thanks for this feedback. When I was married, I did talk a lot about my marriage and the content was always 
about how marriage was a challenge and the ways that we worked to make it better. That felt like an honest representation of exactly where our relationship was. If you've been married, maybe you can relate. (laughs) What makes you think I want to be relatable? I want to be relatable. Uh, You work on the hard stuff and celebrate the good stuff. When it was no longer healthy to keep working on it, I was also honest about that too. Okay, so no responsibility at all that she had been honest the whole time when she was selling conferences. She, you know, she was honest about her literally heading down for divorce. She had no issues, no, you know, lack of transparency when she's talking about making out with her hubby during quarantine. That was all accurate. She just, you know, she's been honest. Okay, bullshit. (laughs) I'm going to call some bullshit on that one. Uh, But no, yeah, she's not apologizing. She's, girl, stop apologizing. She's not. She's not sorry, as she would say. Um, And uh, she has no regrets. I don't regret anything. Yeah, so no, she was honest the whole time, according to her. So no responsibility on the front of um, making it seem like her marriage was better than it was. Because even one of the last conversations I remember they, they recorded on the Rise Together podcast, they said, this has been such a hard year. It's like we're in a polyamorous relationship with the business, but we are stronger and better and more in love than we've ever been. That to me, that does not scream, oh, they're about to get divorced and they're being super transparent about that. But I digress. Okay, the second part. Also, now this is, <laughs> this is the best part. But also. Also, I can understand why that video 14 months ago, she also said, let me just cut it off right there. She, in the podcast that she deleted parts of uh, the social media anxiety one, she said, this was years ago, years ago. Okay, now she's, she's done the math and she's realized it's 14 months. But also, but also she puts that in there, I think, to comp- try to distance herself as much as possible. Like 14 months ago is a lifetime. I've changed, I've evolved. You know how evolution works. Evolution works every six months. I've evolved three times, basically. (laughs) Two times, two and a half times, basically. (laughs) Okay, sorry, I'll read it. Also, I can understand why that video 14 months ago was so hurtful, and I'm sad to have lost your respect. To clarify, though, I never said what you wrote above. I said that the woman who helps to clean my house cleans the toilet. I honestly didn't see it as disrespectful because I cleaned the toilet. And you probably clean your toilets and millions of other people clean their toilets. I was literally just saying one of the things she does. Okay, why'd you say it twice? And she also said it in the live stream that she was all pissy about. Um, So she said it more than once. And she also said it in Girl Stop Apologizing. She also said, hire someone to clean your toilets. So she associates, obviously, in her life, not just this one moment on TikTok, she associates in her life generally, in my opinion, that cleaning people are there to clean your shit. (laughs) They are there to clean up your shit in the bathroom, in the toilet, and you are there on earth to record podcasts and be fancy and, you know, go to Hawaii with your children. That's the discrepancy that she sees between the haves and the have nots. And she sees herself as a have, which she is, and a cleaning lady, sweet lady who cleans her toilets is a have not. And just make sure you're not a have not. Listen to my podcast to find out more about how to not be a loser like my cleaning lady. That's the vibe that I get from her. And this comment is sort of doubling down on that to me. Uh, Thank you, Anat. Anat Rabkin, thank you so much. Uh, She says, thank you for putting these people in their place. Self-help is right. They only help themselves. (laughs) Yup, that's correct. I love your content. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, this comment makes me feel. I'm super freaking privileged. Makes me feel super freaking privileged. But also just make sure. But also. Just know. I am not problematic. I am not problematic oh she's gonna hate that sound bite but it's been collected because you made a mistake and you put out the podcast and of course i have it on auto download and now i have that sound bite forever i don't regret anything oh thank you nat um okay <laughs> so again she understands why you're mad but you got it all wrong you got it all wrong she just said 
that it was a woman who cleans because obviously everyone cleans their toilets. No big deal. Um, I absolutely understand in retrospect how it sounded disrespectful. For what it's worth, that woman has been with me for years and it's and it still with me today. Freudian slip. I think she wanted to say is still with me today. And I would never disrespect her. I wouldn't be able to be a single working mama without her help. Okay, she also says she works like three hours a week and she's single half the time. Half the time her ex-husband who is like a millionaire as well takes the kids. And she, I'm assuming she still has nannies. Ah, it's a stretch to call yourself a single working mama. It's like, I guess, a shade, yes, on the spectrum of single working mamas, but uh, we all, I don't know. I, I just like a, a, an actual single working mom, like a nurse or something, or someone with a regular job teacher and the father of the child's out of the picture. To me, that's like a single working mama in my mind, but maybe I'm just being, you know ignorant on that, but whatever. I'll let her have that one. And the last part, I am a human. Okay, Dave, Dave Hollis here checking in. I am a human and I make mistakes, but apparently you don't because you just said the two things that he criticized you for were not mistakes. It was just like misinterpreted. So what are you, you don't make mistakes. Obviously your team makes mistakes and you make mistakes for listening to them, but that's the only mistake I've ever heard her admit to. But I also work really, really hard to learn from them. <clears throat> I hope the work that I do is a reflection of that. If you keep watching, I hope to earn back your respect. Love and light to you. Love and light to you. That's like, God bless you, sweetheart. Oh, God bless your stupid heart. That's like the Southern you know, way to say, fuck you. Love and, this is the hippie way to say, uh, fuck off. Am I the only hippie? A love and light to you. Goodbye. Toodles. Uh, and then he, re he responded, thanks for the reply. I hope you reach all your future goals with respect, Rob. It's just like, first of all, I don't even really believe that this is not a planted comment. I, I believe that because there's been other comments that I've seen on her other videos recently since like these Rage Talk tickets have popped up and um, you know gone on sale. They seem to like, be very, um, I don't know what's the word, like uh, specifically saying like, oh, wow, Rachel, this vlog gives me life. Like, <laughs> as Dave would say, like this, I love that you love coffee mugs. Like no one's commented stuff like that in like over two years on Rachel's page. And then all of a sudden, like she's got like 10 amazing comments that are specific to her, to her giving me life and I don't know it, like okay then this person this person is like Rachel Hollis's a biggest fan uh and I would be concerned a little bit if I was Rachel but um the thing that okay the reason I say that about the comments and that that might be planted because it really addressed it in like a respectful way and gave her the opportunity to address it and his response was kind of odd like oh I oh, your future goals and his account is like a very dead account I looked it up and there's like one video from like 10 years ago so I just feel like these things might be a little bit like set up by somebody and here's another one to go to my theory um this video called five things that help me feel better okay there's 40 comments there's 13,000 views so actually more than her average I would say um as of late uh, okay, so here's a comment that she also responded to. Shocking, like, uh, again, out of nowhere. She's never read comments in her life. Now all of a sudden she's like on YouTube, like commenting and getting comments, which is odd. And this person says, OMG, I do the same thing with coffee mugs. I love them so much. I have way too many. Also, you are what's interesting in your vlogs. You are so funny. I love that you have opened yourself up to us so much. Very brave. Please just keep being you. <laughs> like, maybe I guess this is a real comment, but like, who writes like that? Like, like, I don't know. And it's so specific to what she wants people to think about her, in my opinion. Like, Rachel wants you to think that she's authentic and open and that, you know, 
she's funny and whatever and brave. And then she responds, I'm so glad to see all these fellow coffee mug lovers. I def thought I was all alone in this obsession. Yeah, Rachel, you're the only, she's the only person who drinks from coffee mugs in the whole world. I thought I was alone. I didn't know. Did you guys know that there's a place called Starbucks? They sell this thing. It gives you energy. I had no idea. No one ever told me. No one ever told me that. There's a place where you can go. <sighs> Anyways. And then like, okay, listen. Yes, I love how simple these are. And as a new mom, I'm still trying to find my little things. Like as if like she's, my whole theory was that Rachel has, is gonna like pitch something. And she said she's working on some sort of new project. Thank you, Shaney. She's like working on some new project. And my thought was like, she's, she like sent some sort of like TV executive this video and was like, look at all the people I'm attracting. Look, new mothers, people who love coffee. It just like, I don't know. It just seems so, like the person's identifying themselves as a new mother. It's like, do people really write like that? I don't know. Maybe I'm just like getting too, too, sp okay, again. Vlogging should be about who you really are. It's all about your amazing high vibe that shows everyone you're genuine. It's real and shows how relatable you truly are. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. And then the, Mike, again, writes, so simple, coffee mugs that help you achieve your amazing vibe. This is such a revelation. And she liked both of those, but it's almost like the person, her team that's supposed to be like changing these accounts, like forgot to change the account <laughs> and just like put Mike twice. I don't know. And it's very so good and simple pleasures and joy. I truly love all the positive, easy things you share with your community, Rachel. Because of the content you are sharing, I am daily creating the life slash day of my dreams. I'm telling you, like normally on her, on her comments, it's like, three hater comments, 20 spam comments. And like this person who defends everything that she does and says like, it's horrible. People hate you, Rachel. You need to know this. Like, I don't know. Here's another one. I burst into unexpected tears when you mentioned gratitude for your grandpa. I'm so grateful for my grandparents. I, and again, all these emojis, they use the same emojis as the first one. Like this is, like, I've never seen this many emojis used in a comment before. <laughs> I needed that release and reminder. Thank you for that. And thank you for the tips on feeling better. I'm going to pick up some cute jammies for myself and get my son a cute mug. I love you, Rach. I'm rooting for you, too. I don't know. <laughs> People think he's being sarcastic. Perhaps. Perhaps I'm reading too deeply into this. She liked it though, so maybe she didn't get the sarcasm. Or maybe her team, uh, maybe her team was trying to be sarcastic. <laughs> okay, she responded, oh, I love hearing I'm not the only one. Idea for you. I have framed pictures of them everywhere, not just in the usual places like usual loser people like you and I, but in the cabinets that hold my plates and next to the jars of pasta in the pantry. I love that no matter where I go in the house, I can see them. I highly fucking doubt that that's true. I highly doubt that that's true. You have a picture of your grandpa next to your pasta in your pantry? Prove it, Rachel. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Uh, more people. Again, like another one with an emoji. Look, Rach, most of us love vlogs just because they are normal daily life things. You could literally sit there and read a book and I'd still watch. We love it. Love you back. I'm rooting for you. Thank you, Rachel. Love your videos. It always keeps me going. I just love you, Rachel. I first met you at Rise Dallas. You rock, girl. I love, love, love you. I'm grateful. And I'm coming to Charlotte. It's like, I don't know. And then someone said, when you first started out, you focused a lot on your creator. You seem to have forgotten him. For this reason, you have lost me. Totally understand your decision, Joyce. Sending you love and light. Love and light. La, 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 love and light. Love and light for you. I don't know. And then some negatives. So they didn't, she didn't delete the negative ones. It's interesting. And then she even liked, this is going to set this woman off or set this person off. 
I think she liked the comments about the bullies that make money and whatever. It's interesting. And this person said, you have changed my life so much with just the basic things. Your ideas are gold. I just find it to be like, who, who's praising? Like all this, again, out of nowhere. It's been two years since anyone's commented anything. And all of a sudden this one vlog that is repurposed from her other content is apparently changing lives. I don't buy it. I ain't buying it, girlfriend. Girly Sue. And then just as the second that she starts commenting for the first time ever, there's too convenient, too convenient. Mm -hmm. Anyways, okay, let's listen. Uh, this is going to be a live react to things I hate about myself. The shortest ever Rachel Hollis podcast. Uh, and the prediction is, let's see, I think she's going to be in the middle of the screen, is that it's going to be one of those things like, tell me, you're in a job interview. Tell me your weaknesses. I care too much. Sometimes I'm too on time. <laughs> Sometimes I just love my job so much that it gets in the way of loving my spouse. But they understand because they know that work comes first and um, that I just, middle management is my passion and um, nothing's gonna get in the way of that. That's, that's what I'm predicting. And I, like I said, I did see like kind of the rough overview of what this is about. So I think it's going to be like, I just, I, you know, I care too much. I try too hard. I'm too emotionally invested in my viewers and whatever. Like I'm too, I'm too focused on goals, but we'll see. I'll give it an open mind because that's just how I roll. Cause I'm built different. All right. I'm not, I'm built the same. Okay, here we go. I'm glad I get to see her for once because I waited. Hey guys, it's, my name's Rachel. I, I know my own name. That was, my name is Rachel and I am the host of the Rachel. She's so quirky. She's so quirky. How's the sound volume? Is it equal? I'll raise it up a little bit. She's, she'd be so quirky. She, uh, I'm going to say again, I don't want to talk about looks, but I mean, she's been looking young. She's got that like fountain of youth, whatever's going on, man. She, she looks younger now than she ever has. She used, when she was like in her 20s, she looked like she was a 50 year old woman. So now that she's almost 40, she's looking young. And I think like they say, money is the key to youthfulness because <laughs> she's doing something that looks good. Rachel Hollis podcast and I'm here to chat. I was thinking about the movie, 10 things I hate about you. When I was a teenager, that movie came out and sorry, and I had never seen anything like it before and I loved it so much and I didn't even understand that it was based on The Taming of the Shrew. I just I just adored everything about it. The title is so iconic and that moment in when at the end if you haven't seen it she's like has to read a poem or she has to write something or whatever but she writes this list of the 10 things that she hates about this guy. Spoiler alert. I'm sorry if you haven't seen that movie. I think it's like 25 years old or something. So <laughs> if you don't know that moment, she makes this list of all these things that she hates about the, him. And what you realize as she's reading is she doesn't actually hate anything about him at all. She loves him, blah, blah, blah. What it made me think of was what are things, instead of like things I hate about you, what are things I hate about me? Okay, now hold on. I actually won't use the word hate because I don't hate anything. Whenever I think about people making comments about other people, I think about making comments about myself. <laughs> that is the most Rachel Hollis line I've ever heard of. When I watch a movie about other people, I think about me and what I think about me. <laughs> okay, go on. Think about myself. But what are things that I dislike about myself? And if you think that I'm about to be like cellulite, no. Girl, we are not, we do not do that here. This is not a conversation about disliking the way you look. Or Says the woman who's like, my boobs were saggy yogurt sacks <laughs> on a daily basis and says, I pee my pants and it's really hard, but I accept it. <laughs> I pee myself like every five seconds. She's saying something about her, her urine uh, experiences and how, oh, I hate that. But yet we have to hear about it. 
Anyways, she talks about her body a lot and how she hates her body in certain ways, but that she's accepting of it, sort of. In the case of the breast, she got a boob job to fix that. Okay, fine, do whatever you want. But she's like, we don't do that around here. Yes, you do. I've watched this channel for a long ass time. You definitely do it. Okay, sorry. Or anything like that. It's not the typical stuff. But I do think there is incredible power in confronting the parts of yourself that you want to make better. The parts of yourself that you don't like. If you can't face it, you can't fix it. So there's incredible power, I think, in being honest with yourself about what you need to work on. Okay, so far... At least with Toilet Gate, she has never, ever, ever, not once, acknowledged anything that I think of value. Other than she understands, sort of, that her intent is different than impact. However, she says, well, though, my intent was good, so therefore I shouldn't really be held accountable. <laughs> so she ain't really taking a close look at that. And maybe she'll talk about things I hate about myself. Number one, I compare myself to Harriet Tubman one too many times. <laughs> If that's on the list, then I'll, I'll take all my words back. And that's what the conversation is about today. Hold on, I need more espresso. Okay. Uh, and again, espresso, she, she has Dr. Amon on, the brain doctor, about 100 times a, a year. And his advice is don't drink alcohol. She drinks alcohol a lot. And don't drink caffeine. She drinks caffeine and has a whole segment show, now a tour about her drinking caffeine. Why have him on? <laughs> A big thing that I don't like about myself is that I can be a weenie. I could go stand on stage, literally, you could call me right now and be like, Rachel, we have 20,000 people waiting in arena. My, fe my flaw is that I have fears. Shut up. <laughs> God. And then immediately is going to humble brag about how she can do other things that other people are afraid of, like speaking in front of arena. Why didn't uh, she does that? We're on tour. You know, on tour, you know, in conference, you know, at the, not even the conference, you know, at conference, there's always, like, she takes away the preposition. I hate it. In, in arena, uh, with 20,000 people, no problem. Can I, can I jump in a volcano and snorkel in the lava? No, I can't. I'm human, guys. We're all humans. Like, ugh, shut up. In Honolulu, they need- This is not a real thing to be hating of yourself for. In a motivational speech. I would roll over there and kill it and have no fear about that. But I am genuinely afraid of things that other people don't. Like if I cold water, cold water, look, that's, you're like rolling your eyes. You're like, no, yeah, I hate cold water. I hate the feeling of, I just have such a visceral response to it. And this has kept me from doing so many things, getting in the pool. Okay. I was going to say like what <laughs> going into water, drinking a glass of water. What else is what, what? There's like one activity that you are prevented from doing and you've done it anyways, despite your fear of cold water. I think sh these are things I'm uncomfortable with. Things I don't enjoy is, is a better list so far. Cold water. Okay. I'm a f I have a fear of ice cubes. It really holds me back from delicious beverages. It's very sad. Send me money. With my kids going into the ocean, I'm terrified of the ocean right? Like I love Hawaii. I get in to the water up to my knees. Like my whole family has to talk me into getting up to maybe my neck. I am just, I'm so scared of so many things and it prevents me from doing a lot of stuff that seems fun. I'm afraid of like skiing is terrifying for me because it, it seems <laughs> so fast. Um, skateboarding, anything that involves like going fast. And I'm like, yeah, I'm brave with my work, right? I guess I'm brave when I think other people are involved, but if it's just me by myself, it's very scary to me. And I 
keep myself from doing stuff that other people do. My, my best friend, Sammy, she will jump into any body of water anywhere in the world. Like, doesn't matter. Let's go. She's a water baby. She lives for it. And I'm just She's a water I baby. I want that freedom. What does that mean? She's a grown adult. She's a water baby. <laughs> She's a water baby. She'd, just, she'd be jumping into water all over the world, this crazy, crazy girl. She's be jumping into what she is jumping into water and she has a better life than me. It's like, okay, this is so stupid. Number one, dumb, dumb. It's really holding me back guys. And of course, then like the next podcast, she's in deep water in Hawaii, proving that she's overcome her fear of hating herself for not being in cold water. It's so predictable. Freedom. I want to do more things where I'm not so afraid. And I have like skiing, guys. Uh, let's get a GoFundMe so Rachel can learn how to ski better. She's got a fear. She also has a fear of hot chocolate. So let's work on it for her, for her sake. This is inspiring me. This is inspiring my soul. I'm going to comment. This has inspired my soul. I am with you, girl. I hate skiing. They forced me to ski. Ugh. It's horrible. This year, because this was my commitment to stop being so afraid, I've done... I went skydiving, most petrifying thing I've ever done. I jumped into the ocean in Cornwall on January 1st in England. I, you can't even imagine how cold that water was. It's not making my life bad, but I do think it's keeping my life from being. Okay, so you just said you don't have a problem with this because you're still doing things. All right. Thank you, Courtney. Love your lives. Oh, appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, 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 um. Oh, I love that sound. <laughs> been too long since i played that one thank you courtney all right back to rage this has been okay it's so we're four minutes in out of a 12 minute video and so far all i've heard is i'm afraid of water yet i jumped in the water and i i go to the ocean and i do all the things anyways <laughs> better the second thing that i can't wait don't like about myself <laughs> i obsess over fixing people okay <laughs> oh wow yeah that's what I really have to like brace myself for she's like guys you're not gonna believe this <laughs> Oof. sometimes I fart I fart guys oh my god I know I know it's crazy it's so crazy I'm the only person who's gonna admit that to you because I'm authentic buy my book I obsess over fixing people. Okay, I'm assuming she means Dave, <laughs> the man of her dreams, her boo thing back in the day, who uh, financed her entire career. Yeah, okay. I'm sure she did try to fix them, but this is your fatal flaw? You obsess over fixing people? How about you fix yourself, girl? Fix your career, obsess over that. At the risk of sounding like a douche lord, I have helped a lot of people at a conference or books Stop. or po I, you know people come up to me all the time and okay this is worse this is worse than i anticipated i got i'm a douche lord but i've helped a lot of people this is i hate this about myself i i help too many people or though i just i know i'm not saying i've helped everybody but i know that i've helped a lot of people when i encounter in my very real life my friends my kids, um, my partner, people at work. This is a joke. And I know that they're going through something. I obsess over it. Do these three things. It's one of my favorite things that I've learned in the last year is to ask someone, do you want, like if someone tells you and they're going through something hard, do you want a distraction or a solution? Is a really great question. I am solution oriented, but I can also be really good at distraction. And it's important for me to ask that question so I can show up as a better friend. But I will behind the scenes, I will obsess over all the things that they could be doing or things I know would help or books that they should read. But honestly, I just have to remind myself that that is 
to be a good friend is to meet someone where they're at. The third thing that I don't like. About- <laughs> Hold on, everybody. Stand by. We're having a little break. I don't know if anyone will know what this is, but this is where all the sound bites come from. And I just got a surprise Amazon Prime gift from Steven. Thanks, Steven. Wow. He just delivered this to me right now. Thank you so much. You want to give a, a little wave? You want to you, reveal? Ah, oh, okay. Hand reveal. It's actually Jack. <laughs> I'm actually dating Jack. 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 Just kidding. Okay, sorry. Going back to the thing. That was exciting. I needed to acknowledge that so he didn't feel <laughs> like I was ignoring him. <laughs> thank you, Steven. And thank you everyone for, for hanging on. Okay, let's go back for just a second. Okay, so let's just recap. Number one, she's she's too scared of cold water, yet she does everything. She's she achieved that. She's skydived. She's, you know, kind of getting over that fear. Cool. Number two, she's obsessed too much with trying to help you because she she has all the answers. So she just knows what the three things that everyone could be doing to fix their life today so that's her you know I don't I'm so under, I'm missing why she hates that because what they disappoint her she's not really saying why that's a hateful thing um or how it disrupts her life except that she gets obsessed with trying to help which again is like I try too hard <laughs> I care too much so to be a good friend is to meet someone where they're at so now she needs to get better at just me- not helping them, just meeting them where they're at. Cool. All right. Got it. The third thing that I don't like about myself is I feel very nervous when things are too calm. When things start to feel good, when everything's calm. Okay, maybe this is one that's like sort of like shameful, I suppose. But again, a stretch. (sighs) I'm like, (gasps) it makes me nervous. Because on some level, I feel like the other shoe's about to drop. So now, when I start to feel those anxious emotions, those anxious feelings in my body, I'm just like, nope, no. No, we are not going to do that. We are not like I separate myself. This has been really powerful too. separate myself from my thoughts. You are not your thoughts. You are a human being experiencing your brain and whatever your brain is focused on in the moment. And the thing I'm working on in my life right now is when it's peaceful, (sighs) not believing that it's supposed to be worse. You guys, no, she cured her anxiety. God, uh, you didn't listen to episode two, seven. She cured her own anxiety by sheerly acknowledging that it exists. And therefore, by will of her mind, she got rid of it. And she didn't use medication because people in her family got worse from medication. So she just uses supplements. But if you need your medication, take your fucking medication. That's a Rachel Hollis quote. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, that seems, I mean, that was sort of like an actual flaw, sort of, because yeah, that's, I, I deal with that as well. When things are calm, you think like, oh God, like what's the next? Because you lived in a family where there's like always something around the corner about to happen. So you're like, like, oh my God, I can't get too comfortable. I totally relate to that. Uh, I'm in therapy about that, <laughs> literally, uh, among other reasons. But that, you know, that is sort of something I could be like, well, I don't really like that about myself because it causes me to stir up drama or it has uh, in the past where it's like, you know, I really want to start a fight with somebody <laughs> just to distract myself uh, from feeling like uh, anxious about this piece. But she just said, again, like, she always, this is Rachel Hollis's entire, entire brand 
in a nutshell. She proposes something that she struggled or struggles with in this case, and then exi- and then immediately says, this is the solution that worked for me and that I am doing now that works for me and will work for you too. And if it doesn't work for you, then that's okay. That's her new add-on because she doesn't want to be held responsible <laughs> for telling people what to do. Um, but yeah, it's never something that like, I can't feel calm. I'm working on this. I don't really have a solution for it. That's what I'm dealing with. It's like, now I think, mm, no, no. I tell myself, no, I'm a human soul experiencing whatever. And so she's already got a solution for the issue that she hates about herself. All right, number four. Can't wait. Fourth thing that I don't like about myself, but that I am working on, I have a lot of anger still about my ex. I am working on releasing the anger because the anger is not going to help me. It- Who's your ex? I don't know who your ex is, Rachel. I need you to be more specific. Is it Dave Hollis, who you shared an entire company with? The CEO, former CEO of Hollis Company? <clears throat> is it Dave? Is it Dave? Is it? <laughs> My ex. Like, again, I've said this before. She's not going to spill the tea on Dave. She like alluded to all these things that he's done and all these horrible things that he's done. And then I just don't buy it anymore. I think, you know, she's made it clear that she's mad about something. I just think that she, I don't know, doesn't like him anymore and probably didn't like him for a long time. Got to a place where she didn't need his financial security anymore and got out. He seems like a douchebag. Yeah, but I don't think there's any secret like, thing that happened anymore because otherwise she's already alluded to it so many times it's not helping the children it's not helping anyone to think of all these possible like things that he's done so I'm assuming those possibilities are actually worse than whatever it was that he did personally I don't think he cheated I think he had an alcohol problem which he's admitted I don't know I don't I don't know about any prescriptions I don't know but if that's what it is, that's also an addiction. That's something that like should be probably handled a little bit lighter and more with sensitivity. So I don't think that's what it is. I don't know. It's like, again, like she just like wants to, like her children, again, like are going to grow up, are going to have access to all this. It's like, is this good to put out there for them too? Like we know you have anger about your ex or whatever, but like this is not really valuable to anybody. And now you're just, airing your dirty laundry in this like really vague way so again you're just assuming the worst and this is a flaw oh I don't love my ex-husband okay (laughs) cool I think every other probably woman in the world is not like loving their ex-husband and if they do that's probably worse that'd be a worse thing to hate about yourself anyways it will not make it better it will not fix the past it will not fix the present it will do nothing this is another area where I feel like the other shoe might drop again at any moment. And that makes me feel sort of anxious. And then that makes me feel angry. But I want to honor my anger because my anger did help me to face a lot of things and to learn a lot of things and to really figure stuff out in a way that I hadn't ever. I could not have imagined a world where I'd still be in this place after so much time. But again what you got divorced two years ago you were together for 20 years you're already in a brand new relationship with the new dude these things that are like these big life things and first of all she was with dave since she was 19 that's your entire adult life you're with this guy oh i can't believe i'm not over this by now i wouldn't be over this for another 10 years you got to unpack a lot of, lot of baggage. Plus you were publicly together. Plus you got a lot of backlash. Plus you had a business together. You should be, don't, that's not, that's not even in passing. She's saying that like, I can't believe I'm not over this by now. Like that's bad advice for anyone. That's just hearing that and going, oh my God, well, I broke up with my ex six years ago and I'm still struggling. And she shares custody. There's so many issues. Plus he's got a new girlfriend who's like insane. So the fact that like, oh, I should be over this by now. No, you shouldn't. As a normal human being, I mean, I know exceptional Rachel Hollis is exceptional and better than everyone, but even her, give it a few more years. 
give yourself a break. Again, the more that I learn, the more that I understand that this is part of the process. And as long as I'm moving in the right direction, I feel like I'm making strides. The fifth thing, and I, I just, this is just again, like, this is like five ways I can show off about myself. Number one, I have do all these fun activities. I go skydiving. I go diving. I go here. I go there. I do so many cool things. Uh, number two, I care so much. I have so many friends that need so much help and I've helped so many people. Uh, number three, what was number three? Anxious. Sometimes I get anxious when things are so peaceful and things have been really peaceful lately for me. So I'm anxious sometimes. Okay, that's good. I hate my ex because he's such an asshole. Um, but I, I, you know, I'm trying to get over it and I'm trying not to be angry because it doesn't help me and serve me. And he's the real reason why we broke up and he sucks. It's none, none of it's my fault. Okay, that's the four things I've heard so far. Cool. I struggle to even say I don't like this, but I'm being honest and I don't like this. Is that my hormones <laughs> still get whacked out? I did a whole episode about this. I can't. I can't even take this serious. My hormones are wackadoo. That's like me. I hate that my blood is red. I hate it. I hate it, guys. It's really, it hurts me to say this, but I just, I don't like the color red and I hate that my blood is red. Mm. It's like your hormones are wackadoo. First of all, there's a lot of controversy whether that's even a real thing in this in the way that she's making it sound, the way that she's talked about it. She's like, oh, you're either this estrogen dominant or whatever dominant. And if you fall into one category, then you need to eat more grains to get into the, like there's a lot, a lot of debate. I've been looking it up as to whether that's even a real thing. And it seems like it's sort of not. Hi, shy soul. Thank you so much. At least in the way, like hormones obviously are real. Obviously hormones can be out of whack, but in the way she's like balanced and like there's this certain label for balancing, not so much as clear cut as she's making it seem. And as like the doctor that she has on that's also associated with Dr. Amen Clinics, which I have a lot of problems with, that she's had on before. Again, not really, not really computing for me. But anyways, this is something you hate about yourself, a medical condition as she's probably making it seem. Oh, I really hate that I have lupus. I really hate that. I really hate that I have breast cancer. <laughs> I mean, if you read, if you watch the book review, I was just talking about the Louise Hay book review, the one that Rachel Hollis recommends you read, How to Heal Your Life. You'll kind of understand why having a physical condition would be your fault. But this is just sort of like roll my eyes. Like, okay, your physical body having an issue. I hate it. <laughs> With my hormone doctor, please go listen to it. If you are a bleeder if you are someone that has i hate when she sex says hormones that. that affect your body right you've got progesterone progest progest you've got estrogen and progesterone progesterone you got hormones in your body <laughs> that affect the way you feel and affect your moods please go listen to the episode i did with dr brush i'm really hard on myself if i feel like i'm backsliding i don't mind making mistakes i don't mind be very careful if you go and watch this stuff. It's like not really backed by full science. I think she's like a, you know, a, a naturopath. And whether you believe in that or not, I am on the camp that doesn't really believe in that. Um, I think I would much rather go a traditional route. And I don't think traditional medicine is like the best ever. I think there's a lot of problems with big pharma and all that stuff. It's like saying like, the, it has to be black and white. Like, oh, you either believe in naturopath or you believe in like Western medicine. It's like, no, I think they both have issues. But if I'm going to have to pick one, I'm going to pick Western medicine and like traditional routes. If I have cancer, I'm getting chemo. I'm not going to get a massage in my lymphatic foot. You know, that's just my two cents. And I believe that this doctor sways that way. So anyways. And moving in a direction very, very slowly, but I hate when I feel like I am, I've regressed or I've gone back to like a previous version of my, oh, it just drives me bonkers. I'm working on it, but it is something that I currently don't like. And I do, I just cannot encourage you enough to go on your own journey. If you feel like you are experiencing mood swings that are really intense, if you feel like you're having bad cramps, if you feel 
very low at certain times of the month, very overwhelmed, very anxious. Like these are not normal ways to feel. Please hear me right now. Yes, they are. These are totally normal things to feel, Rachel. In my opinion, as a non-expert, the same, I have actually, I have a college degree, not that it's in anything. It's in broadcast journalism, but we're on the same level of education. I will also say the opposite. These are things that are okay to feel, to feel overwhelmed. Things are going on in the world that are overwhelming. The rate in which our society moves very, very quickly. We just went through a fucking pandemic. We're recovering from that. People uh, have been dying from illnesses and from things that, you know, two years ago weren't even in the lexicon and still are. And, you know, it's just like, it's okay to feel these things. And it doesn't necessarily mean that's your hormones. And the second thing is I hate, she's been going on this like thing lately where she's trying to be woke and she's like calling people bleeders and stuff. And it's like, I, I'm sort of turned off by that. I understand like the non-binary thing, but it's like, can you just say women or people who have like periods? I don't know. But the whole thing is like, it's like, I don't know. I don't even know what I want to hear. I just, when I hear bleeders and like, it's just like, to me, it's like, it takes away the humanness, the humanity of being a human being who has other functions other than menstruating. I don't know what I want her to say, you know, instead, but I just don't like that phrase personally. And I'm sorry if that's offensive, but I just, I, I'm turned off by it. But she's been doing this thing where even in her podcast about the social media anxiety, she's like, if your hormones are out of whack, like don't go on social media. Okay, but she's insinuating that women or people who menstruate are more emotional than a man, right? Or someone who doesn't menstruate. So again, she's saying like, your hormones are out of whack. You're acting crazy. You got to get them in check. You got to go see this, you know, doctor that's going to tell you to eat nuts and berries to fix it. It's like, how come we can't just admit that women and men also have emotion and we need to understand how to control these things better by practicing and dealing with the emotions. It's not always like women need chocolate eat chocolate during your period and then you'll feel better or like oh take this you know supplement to to lower your period so you're not so mean to everybody it's just like again kind of like playing on that stereotype of like women are emotional and need to be controlled at all times I just I'm frustrated by this that was a side rant I'm sorry okay let's continue how her hormones are bothering her there are things that you can do to help balance the way you feel. They're actually really simple changes that just happen with knowledge. So if you've not listened to that episode, please go listen in. Please go do your own research. Please go read Period Power by Maisie Hill. Just please arm yourself with knowledge because this is still frustrating for me and I've been working on it for a year and I just know how life-changing it can be for you if you make change. But this is the last thing I thought of today and it's a doozy. This is the thing I dislike about myself the most and that I have been working on the longest. I trust <laughs> authority. I trust too much. <laughs> I trust too much. I put my faith in God too much and then he lets me down. Okay, I trust authority when I shouldn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm all ears, Rachel. <laughs> what do you mean by this? I mean, can I get a witness? Mother Earth, the island of Hawaii, whoever is listening, I have learned, I have learned <laughs> that just because someone is older, just because someone is male, just because someone has a big job, has a big title, just because someone is in a position of authority does not mean they are an authority. I don't listen to authority when it comes to my dreams, but holy crap, do I do it when it comes to other stuff. You know in your heart, in your gut, if something isn't right. And it doesn't mean that you make rash decisions and you you know, burn down everything, but it means that you do go slow. And you proceed with caution and you do a little bit more research and you take it into effect and you really look at all of the options and what these things mean and what it will mean for your career, your finance, your life if you agree to it. 
What are you talking about? Those are what? The six. <laughs> Like the least detail with like the most questions. What are you talking about? Is this like an anti-vax thing that I'm like not understanding? Like I didn't get any of that. Like I listened to authority too much. Mother Earth, Hawaii, hear me as a witness. Do your research. That seemed like a little sketch to me. Especially because she cut it off immediately. <laughs> Can we listen to that part again? Just like very quickly. I won't take that long. Is she anti-vaccine? Oh, please, God. I mean, she's in wellness, which it's like there's a pipeline for sure. Like, you know, emotion or whatever, energy healing to no vaccine pipeline. I mean, can I get a witness? Mother Earth, the island of Hawaii. Listening Whoever to is listening, I have learned. I have learned <laughs> that just because someone is older, just because someone is male, just because someone has a big job, has a big title, just because someone is in a position of authority does not mean they are an authority. I don't listen to authority when it comes to my dreams. I mean, it does. If you're talking to a police chief, it does. <laughs> and they do have authority over you or a elected official. Maybe not Dave Hollis, but who thought he was an authority. But holy crap. Do I do it when it comes to other stuff? You know in your heart, in your gut, if something isn't right. Okay, but what? Like, okay, this is what I'm thinking. Like, she's talking about Dr. Fauci. <laughs> and she's like, in my gut, I knew that something was wrong. And it doesn't mean that you make rash decisions and you, you know, burn down everything. But it means that you do go slow. And you proceed with caution. And you... Do a little bit more research and you take it into effect and you really look at all of the options and what these things mean and what it will mean for your career, your finance, your life if you agree to it. Okay, yeah. I, I, it could be Dave coming onto the company. I mean, that makes sense. But like also, <laughs> I don't know. Those are okay, great, M wonderful. I guess we can assume, yeah, maybe that was Dave like taking over at a CEO, but again, like I think she just wanted to do the fun stuff and was starting to get big so that she didn't want to do the you know the hiring and the paperwork and the you know technical stuff. He was already an executive at Disney. She's like, why not just have him do it and then we can both make more money and I, I don't trust anyone anyways because my team are all idiots and so I can push you around, Dave, and you come in as CEO and he wanted to be. CEO only and she's like okay fine that was her fault as as the current CEO to bring in a new CEO again the buck stops with you sorry I don't really have sympathy that you picked Dave to be your CEO you could have picked someone a lot better and you chose to pick someone you could control I guess I mean I don't even know what she's talking about because she doesn't explain it so I mean she could be talking about something completely different I have no idea are the six things that I don't like about myself but that I am working on. Yeah, that's exactly what she always does. The things I hate about my marriage, but we're better than ever. The things I hate about myself, but I actually love secretly and that I'm perfect. It's really powerful to do this work. It's not. And to unpack and to figure it out. And I would really... All this is telling me is that you have narcissism. <laughs> encourage you. Make sure if you decide to unpack your own limiting limitations... That you do it in ways that are really helpful, not in ways that are just about shaming yourself. Also, you know, I had six. Don't think that, well, I'm going to, you know, oh, well, here's a list of 50 things that are wrong with me. Come on. You're amazing. Stop that. But doing <laughs> some work to just look at the things that you don't like and how you can improve them. Incredibly powerful. <laughs> Cool. I learn nothing. <laughs> I really learn nothing. Uh, that was exciting. Not really. That one only got 1,800 views. Oops. 1,800 views. And rightfully so. That was a snooze first. That was a snoozer. Vague. 
and boring. Um, okay, so now let's go to, let's check in on Heidi Powell. Our pal, Heidi Powell. We have not looked at her in a while. And she does not uh, disappoint. <laughs> she just keeps her kids working. She keeps her children working. Yes, she does. Her kids do not get a day off. Okay, here's something I found weird. <clears throat> um, that's her daughter. Okay, uh, Dave Hollis, a man with his own kids <laughs> and who he is friends with their mother. So this is, you know not his children biologically and not uh by marriage either um he has taken over the role of of dad even though these kids have had well these kids have had one dad so far the other kids have had two stepdad chris and derek so it's just weird that we're showing dave even on heidi's page as father of the year best father uh Daughter Ruby, who's like nine years old, is learning how to ride a bike. Thanks to Dave, it says, uh, we declared that this summer was her summer, that this trip was the trip. And in record time, this cutie became a two wheel warrior. Boardwalks be warned, a huge shout out to Dave Hollis, who took this sweet, ambitious and determined yet scared, unsure little mini of mine. That's exactly how she sees her daughter, this daughter at least, mini of mine poured all of the patience and love into her that he does me and everyone combined with his expert bike rider 101 protocol and miles of running and had her up and riding in 33 short minutes. I'm proud of Ruby girl, proud to see her set her sights on a goal, work as hard as she can to accomplish it, remain so teachable throughout the process and finally get outcome she wanted. In 30 minutes, create confidence, creating confidence in her ability to do this thing and really anything. Today was another great day, another day of memory making and trying new things and feeling grateful for watching these kids continuing to grow into strong little humans, grateful for the support that helps them thrive and most of all grateful for how much they are all learning to put in the work necessary to believe in themselves and all of their limitless potential. I would not want my kid to be touched by a man that is not their father. I'm sorry, in any capacity. Especially in, in any capacity, I'll just say that. And then Dave Hall says, this girl is an exceptional study. She got it so freaking quick. Proud of you, Ruby. You definitely did it. And it's like, uh, we several thousand videos of this girl riding her bicycle to praise Dave for what? I don't know if this is an insult to her, like her daughter's actual father or what? I don't know what the point of that is. Or just to, to try to get Dave to be, you know, seen as again, dad of the year. But it, the, the fun doesn't end there. That was, that was one thing that I noticed. Uh, the other thing is her other daughter, who is 16, uh, got a special shout out as well on Heidi's uh, Instagram as of late. Now, I didn't get everything. There's been a lot more stuff that's gone on on Heidi's Instagram as per usual. But, um, you know, can't get them all. I was, I was out of town for a while, so I didn't, I didn't screenshot everything. But this is the one that I found that I found particularly egregious. Uh, okay, so... This is a, a story relating to buying the bike. And it says, you should have taught me how to ride a bike when I was four. I mean, yeah, kind of. <laughs> she, being nine is kind of shocking that she didn't know how to ride a bike yet, but okay. Uh, especially for parents who are like very athletic and into fitness and stuff. But, you know, they're busy on Instagram talking about their poopies, selling poopy pills. That's something that Heidi did as well. <laughs> This last weekend. Um, okay, then it says, this is the 38th time I've heard this line since realizing yesterday my eight-year-old has never been taught this skill. Okay, this is a little bit different than the Instagram post that said, this is the year, this is the summer that we're gonna do things for our daughter. Uh, but apparently she didn't even know until the day before, and now they're trying to make up for that somehow by buying a last-minute bicycle. 
um, that she didn't know how to ride a bike. Weird. Anyways, who cares? Uh, so they're in the store. First crank goodness, also the beginning of a fun game called Trust Dave. That's problematic. <laughs> I am not problematic. For reasons I don't need to get into why that is a problematic thing to say. Uh, she's going to crush this. And also, I'm sure Dave's excited already about the hours of running behind this bike that's about to happen. Why can't Heidi teach her daughter how to ride a bike? Are men the only ones capable of teaching someone how to ride a bike? Where's Heidi? Heidi just gets a free pass. She just gets to, to document it. She doesn't know how to ride a bike. This is stupid. She, ugh, weird. People are so weird. Okay, but this is the thing I'm focused on now. This is inappropriate, in my humble opinion. Uh, it says, today feels like a big day of firsts. Hopefully, and this reminds me, I th okay, first of all, let me just say, for the record, I talked to my therapist about this, and I think it's true, especially because she, you know, agrees. Um... A lot of this content that I create regarding Rachel and Heidi and stuff is helping me deal with my own issues with my mother. <laughs> and I find, I find Rachel to be very similar in a lot of ways to my mom and Heidi too, to a different degree, but, um, the, the using part a little bit and what, here's a story, personal story, similar to what we're about to watch. One time I was probably 21, let's say. And I was visiting my mom from, from college. I was home for the summer and we were at a bar and I, I don't, I could have even been younger. I don't even know if I was technically allowed to drink yet. We were at a bar restaurant thing and this old man, probably like older man, I should say, probably in his sixties, you know, bald, like older, obviously old. It wasn't like he was like 20 or 25. No, he was obviously much older, like my mom's age sends over to like two drinks, margaritas to our table. And I'm just like, oh, thanks, you know, thank you. And she's like, and there, it was like one of those bar grills that you can dance. And so she's like, my mom's like, get over there, get over there and tell him, thank you, go dance with him. And like pushes me over there because he sent us drinks. I'm like, no, I don't want to. She goes, you can just like say thank you. And that was how my mom is, where she's like, a man sent you something, even though you didn't want it, you didn't ask for it, but because we didn't send it back, which I guess like in hindsight we should have, but then I owe him something. And my mom like was like, well, she, he's obviously not looking at me. You need to go like thank him for this, like by dancing with him. Anyways, that's a personal story to tell you, this is how I feel Heidi would be with her daughter. And especially at that age when you start to like be a teenager or be older, it becomes like this weird blurred line, like we're friends now, but we're not because you're still my mom. Anyways, that was all a setup just to say, uh, here's what Heidi likes to post. And thank God, like if that moment was posted on Instagram, I would be horrified. I mean, Instagram, I don't think was even invented back then, but like that was a private thing that happened that embarrassed me. This is a public thing that she's got 500,000 plus people watching. So anyways. Mars. What? Should we talk about what happened earlier today? Yeah. Sure. What happened? There's a first for everything. <laughs> Marley learned she was a babe ew. today. <laughs> yeah, she goes, ew. She's 16 years old. She's a child. She shouldn't be, ca be calling a babe. And like, obviously Heidi is loving this. She's like so excited that her daughter's been called a babe by an older man. First of all, no, let's stop all of that. And it was a mistake. And the guy seemed to leave as soon as like she said she was 16. But still, why are we celebrating this at all? It says Mars had her first experience being hit on by a 20 something who mistook her for a beautiful 21 year old. Like this is the proud moment that you share. Like Marley doesn't get that much attention really on her Instagram. It's all about Ruby, the younger daughter. And then like, this is what we share about our 16 year old daughter. <gasps> what else do I need to say about this, Dave, to introduce it? That pretty much sums it up. I gotta, I gotta fight <laughs> off the boys. That's my intro. Marley. And she recorded this whole thing. Not only just telling the experience of like, oh, my daughter got hit on. No, she recorded the whole thing and is now gonna show us what the interaction was. And it says, 
setting the scene. I'm sitting on a couch with Ruby on my lap, cash to my right, playing Fortnite. Mars standing by the front screen door, brushing her hair. Obvious oblivious to gym dude making multiple pass by the house to scope the scene. <sighs> okay. Suddenly I see him stop and charmingly, oh, he's charming now. Oh, wonderful. And charmingly asks her if she knows any house parties tonight. Thank you, Marcella Gardens. Welcome. Which to me was an immediate signal to grab my phone and the popcorn. How about you protect your daughter? How about you have this be a lesson of like, hey, set a boundary. This guy is like coming by the house trying to like look into the windows. Maybe this is not a situation we should be in. This is weird. That's my buddy Holden. We're walking down, but honestly, I saw you and I think you're absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. I wondered only if you're interested. But it'd be cool to get your number. Maybe you could like go out for a or something. I can, I'm... God. I mean, <laughs> it seems like he had genuine intentions. Like he thought she, she was in her twenties and he was trying to be polite. I don't know. He didn't seem like he was completely disgusting there. Like what I heard, I don't know if you could hear that, but like the fact that the mom, the 16 year old girl's mother is recording this as like a, a proud moment that she's been called hot or beautiful or whatever. I don't know. And the caption says, Marley, completely confused because she never, she's never experienced anything like this before, has no clue how to respond when he starts telling her how beautiful she is and invites her to a party with him later. His reaction when he learns she's 15, oh, she's 15. Oh, I thought she was 16. I was giving her like more age than I should have. She's 15. Priceless. Her reaction to all, most priceless. Shooters got to shoot, I guess. And he made a nice try on the wrong target. I don't blame him. Props for being respectful in a swing and miss situation. Oh, sorry. That's the mowing guy. Uh, a lot wrong with this. A lot wrong with this. I, I don't even know where to begin. I, you know, I think it's a misunderstanding that she was younger. I think she handled it fine. She's about to handle it right now and be honest and say, hey, I'm 15. And he like literally walks away, which is probably the best and only scenario where this is uh, supposed to go. But just so weird that like, oh, shooters got to shoot their shot. Like, I just, I, something about this, it's not even, I don't even know what I want her to do or like what, is the right thing, but like it just feels so weird and wrong to me, just generally. Six, or I'm 15. Oh, my bad. Sorry. I'm so sorry. My okay. bad. Yeah. You look way like older. Sorry about that. You have a good day. <laughs> He's like, You look way older. Sorry about that. Have a good day. Okay. That's good. She's laughing. <laughs> that was so awkward. She's like, that was so awkward. Yeah, super awkward. <laughs> Even more awkward than now she has to be recorded by her mother and put on the internet about it. Are we ready? And then back to, and back to Dave <laughs> being a great, you know, dad or whatever. So that one really stuck out to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I pulled one other thing that bothered me about Heidi. I mean, everything bothers me about Heidi, to be honest, but recently, um, here's one more thing. And I see everyone's comments. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of things are, are wrong. And again, the fact that I can even watch that and react to it, like I feel bad for her and I almost feel like I'm exploiting her in some way by showing it. But like, I don't know. I think it needs to be discussed because it's not okay. And Heidi does that shit all the time. Like she's always putting their kids private information online, where they go to school, what they do, what their free time, they're, they have no freedom whatsoever. They're on, they're on. You gotta be on, you gotta be on social media if you're in Heidi's child. And it's, it's not cool. That's all I can really say about it. Okay, um, this is the other thing that kind of annoys me about Heidi is that she's like very anti-medication all of a sudden, even though when she had her kidney thing, a while ago, right before their Hawaii vacation, and she was crying, saying that she needed antibiotics and ibuprofen, which, oh, oh my gosh, guess what, Heidi, that is medication. Um, she's 
shilling her supplements or whatever company is paying her some sort of affiliate link fee, I would assume, for her uh, this supplement company. She says, I avoid over-the-counter options because they can be harsh on the body and cause dependency. They wreck my digestive system, which is why I love whatever, because it's all natural and gentle. She's talking about her poopies. <laughs> We've gone so far like down the rabbit hole of what these people will sell on the internet that we've now gone to laxatives. We got teeth whiteners, we got meat sticks, we got bedding, like everything in your life is buyable. It's sellable. Now your bowel movements are also for sale because it's all natural. Anyways, uh, that's about it, folks. That's a short one today. Um, you know, I've been, I've been gone for a while, but that was, that was the, the gist. Am I missing anything? Is there anything else juicy to talk about? Uh, Dave, basically, like I said, has been back just trying to be amazing. He ain't amazing. He didn't write a blog, I don't think, as of late. He just posted a f- couple pictures of his, uh, kids shocking it's all gonna be about his kids from now on and then there was some also there was some confusion as to where um where they were like where dave was i guess we can look at that hold on where dave was and heidi was they're trying to like hide something like they do this like when dave was in rehab they made it seem like he posted a bunch of photos like from austin like oh i'm in austin with my daughter in reality he was in california in rehab trying to like make it seem like he was somewhere he wasn't but then heidi was like, Dave's in California. <laughs> so it was just pointless. So there's been some speculation as to if they're doing that again. But let's just check out what their day is up to. Oh, they're together. <coughs> nope, don't want that. Workouts complete. Half at the gym, half at home. He's barefoot. She's in her favorite workout pants. Don't worry, I made a reel. I know you are worried. Okay, cool. Wonderful. He's going to get all the angles for her. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Back. back. He's back. Back again. I'm having a bad hair day. How dare you? Look at this. You're not having a bad hair day. It looks like I crimped one part of my hair. (laughs) It's how I slept on it. Um, His kids are at camp, so... Enjoy uh, camp. Yeah. Now you're stuck with me. Yeah. Remember when they, she couldn't get her passport and she was going to drive across the world to get her passport and then they got together again and they were like, we're just friends. We're going to, I'm building a community in Austin. Like, again, where's all that transparency when it doesn't actually happen? They're so transparent and authentic and they want to tell us everything, but then all of a sudden they change their mind and then they just go silent. I don't get it. Now they're partners. Partners who work out together stay together, heart, even if it's two different workouts these are two people who are smiling that have no happiness <laughs> i'm sorry that was mean but that's how i feel uh that was a good workout today so that was a great workout yes well we did two he all he does is if you ever watch this too this is a reaction he did this with with rachel too she'll say something and he just repeats it i absolutely hate that quality in somebody i'm gonna eat now she's gonna eat now I love that run. She loved that run. I love that run. Yes. It's like you, he's giving, he's giving nothing. <laughs> he's giving regurgitation as the, as the youngins say. Two separate ones, yeah. really. <clears throat> Cause we have two separate goals, but I did want to show, I did more than what I showed you in those videos. Um, because I want to show you ways that you could do things. I did the I know you may see me post at the gym quite a bit, but I'm telling you guys, most of the workouts I do are just like the ones I posted. Quick, simple, at home, body weight only. Things at home, but those I know for most of you guys, you're looking for different moves that you can do at home. And it's one thing for me to tell you how to do it and another to show you. Like, what is his presence there? Um, What What is he doing? He's just, why does she include him? She could say this information alone. I don't understand. I did not get to post the outtakes quite yet, but they're a doozy. <laughs> they're a dang gone doozy, as Heidi would say. That's a dang gone doozy of a workout. I am not emotionally stable. We know. In the uh, outtakes of the videos that were shot. Well, by the, I'm posting all these things together, so I'll probably 
include them because he was complaining <laughs> about his arm shaking. And I'm like, your arm is shaking. Good Lord. Mine is shaking. Wow. I poop you. I poop you poop. We all poop. So we might as well talk about it and the ways to make sure we stay regular. I poop, we poop, we poop. I was just talking to the camera and it wasn't going. I went in my DMs this morning though. Uh, I feel, Dave, I don't know if you want to stay for this conversation again, but we're going to talk about uh, the thing. Not your poop again. But it's not mine. Here's, I don't know if there's ever, besides Mighty Patch. I mean, Mighty Patch and Hilma. If you have zits and struggle with irregularity, I'm your girl. <laughs> that's, that's what I would put on my Tinder profile if I was single. If you have zits and struggle with irregularity, click right, swipe right on me, and we're going to have a great time at Sizzler's Buffet. <laughs> Tuesday night, you free? Okay, sorry. Um, I guess infamously, uh, Heidi has said many times that she, well, actually all of them, Heidi said it to Chris that they, she's never farted in front of Chris, her ex-husband, ever before. And that she hates talking about like any of that. And that it's like a private thing for her. And that, you know, to keep a marriage alive, don't fart in front of your partner. And then famously also, Rachel never farted in front of Dave and Dave never farted in front of her. Like, what a boring ass life. I'm sorry. What a gas filled life, a gas filled life. Uh, so the fact that she's sort of, sort of open about this topic is sort of surprising. Uh, are literally the two most raved about things on my Insta stories. Yeah, let's talk about making your poop softer. There were so many questions. I had to actually write the questions down. People commenting, <laughs> people saying that they swear by this. I'm oh. telling you, it's amazing. But I very quickly, well, real quick before, I'm gonna put another link here because a handful of you asked. I did ask Hilma to reactivate the code. They said yes, so for the next 72 hours, you can get 20% off. Let me try and answer no, your questions as quickly as possible. Uh, people saying bye-bye. The gentle bowel movement product that I'm talking about right now is specifically designed for regularity. I blow, the stuff that I've talked about, is it similar? Um, this is for regularity, bye-bye bloat. The kind that I've talked about before, I still use it. This is for regularity though, especially on vacation for me. So like if you are having a hard time, what is regularity? Going regularly? If you're having a hard What is like, Heidi, just do this yourself. Sell these pills like you know how to do. You know, sell like your mama told you, okay? You don't need Dave's insight to sell these poopy pills. <laughs> The codependency is strong here. Like, what? Do you know what regularity is? Hey, Steven, do you know what regularity is? I need to tell everyone. Oh, no, okay. He's actually busy. <laughs> I just, it's like so weird. These people are so bizarre. This is almost just like, just watching. Like, I don't really have any comments. I'm just like curious as to see what they do on a daily basis. Just so odd. And like in 30, 40, 50 years, we look back and go, that, that was a dark time. That was a dark time in the internet and the world if we're still like living on this planet. A hard uh, time going to the bathroom regularly, right? Hasn't happened to me since 1975. <laughs> Not one time. It, it happens to me on vacation and I actually got a lot of people sending notes saying the same thing to them. Well, actually, I think, I think she's right because she said this about Dave one time. He's always in the bathroom. So, I mean, I guess that's true. That seems to, that seems to compute. Um, then a couple people said, so does this mean that you don't like love wellness anymore? No, it does not. Here's the thing. My medicine. No, you need it all. You need all the products that I show at all times. You need every single boost shot, hydration drink possible from transform the transform line. You need every cheesecake, blueberry, pina colada flavor to, to function. Your body will not function without those powders. You also need every supplement and every single cliff bar and Luma this and everything that she sells. You need it all guys. You, you don't, you can't just replace one with the other. Obviously, they, the code is always Heidi. <sighs> In cabinet, my supplement cabinet. She screams too. This is where Dave got this screaming into the camera thing. It doesn't, well, maybe it does work. I'm no Instagram influencer, but what's the screaming for? You guys, what is regularity? Dave, what's regularity? 
Okay, it's when you can't go to the bathroom. Have you ever gone since 1975? Oh my God. Okay, guys, you need all of the pills, but not over the counter because that makes you dependent. It's a potpourri of different brands because they all serve very different purposes. Like, it's kind of like saying, oh, because you like, you know, Sprouts brand of fish oil, does that mean you don't like Trader Joe's? No, we like them all. Like, there's great things from different places, different brands have. So you take them all at the same time? This is by far and away my favorite with this. Um, And I also really love this. People had questions about this, said, if you're dairy and gluten sensitive, is this good for you? I would say first, ask your doctor or whoever told you you were sensitive to something. It's great for me. Yes, it is good for him. Okay. It's great for me. I haven't had a poop problem since 1975. It's perfect for me. It's like, okay, it doesn't sound like you have any problems, Dave. Two final questions I'm going to get to real fast. Number one, someone said, um, is this like Miralax because gentle bowel movement support and will I be by the toilet all day? No. How do you know that, Heidi? You don't know that. Go back to what you said before. Ask your doctor before you take anything. You can't. I'm going to tell you exactly how your body will react to this. You can't. No, it is absolutely a substitute in my life for Miralax because I don't like to be by the toilet all day. So this is why I do this. So no, it is just going to help you feel regular right? Without the side effects of Miralax or things like that. And then the next, the question I probably got asked the most um, was, is it safe for kids? I wish I could answer that. So I would actually take this. I wish I could answer that so that you could buy it for all of your children. But you know, I guess I could get in trouble if they take it and die. So ask your pediatrician, I guess. To your child's pediatrician, ask the pediatrician if it's something that your child can take or not. I really, I don't know the answer and I'm sure a lot of it will depend on the age and any conditions that your child might have. Um, Okay, final link, Heidi 20 for 20% off. I love that you guys love this so much too. When you actually get it, those of you that haven't tried it, you're gonna love it even more. What? I love the idea of this so much. (laughs) <laughs> when I actually get it, I'm going to hopefully love it too. Okay. There's her, s- not her son. That's her brother. Oh. Bought her med spa. Oh yeah. Just boarded a plane to somewhere. Can't imagine where they haven't traveled enough. Also, this is a weird hat. Doesn't that mean something? Doesn't that hat mean something? America flag with like less stars. Does she want to secede? Is she trying to secede from the union? Is that what I'm seeing here? Or is she a patriot? Uh, Okay, hi. Real men aren't afraid of facials. Okay, jump scare everybody. Jump scare's coming. your back i had your back dave i've been supporting your ass on these live streams saying that rachel you know is exaggerating things and then you go and post something like crazy like this (laughs) oh the furrow brow was strong after treatment number one i was actually angry he said oh i did record something else of Dave, okay, it's it's little, it's short, I'll, I'll show it. Treatment number two was served with numbing cream, the facial equivalent of an epidural. This is not as fun as you said it was going to be. Also, I might be allergic to this. That's more than a face, you don't get numbing cream in a normal facial. As someone who has gotten normal facials before, that's a little more extreme. That's like plastic surgery levels, like cosmetic procedure levels med spa he don't look so good he don't be looking so good to me (laughs) that picture speaking of getting angry um i put this in my dave hollis folder so forgive me while i (laughs) go into it i have a whole folder of things that will be used one day (laughs) uh dave hates golf Oh, okay, also, yeah, 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 yeah. 
We got to talk about this too. I can't believe I almost forgot. Exposing Dave is my favorite thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. All right. Um, here we go. So Dave is going to show us how he is angry. <laughs> okay, let's see. It says, if you're wondering, my golf style is stupid aggression mixed with not listening to what I've been told about staying in control. <laughs> what a weird thing to post on your own Instagram, especially after you just come back from rehab, you're trying to sell a children's book, and you uh, were pretty much disgraced by being pretty aggressive towards your children in an infamous Instagram live video. I'm not really understanding the purpose, but I guess like he looks muscular a little bit. So he wants to show that like, look, I'm like a tough guy, but here we go. And he plays a song, Rage Against the Machine. I'm not gonna play it cause it'll get demonetized, but okay, watch. He angrily messed up and then he walked away, pissed off. So he like, Slam, that's like really bad sportsmanship, number one. Also, he's playing with his dad and his brother, like as if this matters. It's not like you're Tiger Woods in the last, you know, hole of the Augusta Open or something. Like, this is like for fun, for your free time relaxing. He's all pissy. And he does it again. And it's like, I'm a second chances, I'm a second chances golfer on brand with the rest of my life. So you screw yourself over and get really angry for no reason and then you try again. Cool, bro. Okay, um, that was one thing. <laughs> uh, and this thing I thought was pretty weird. So we love Ford on this channel. We are Ford stands. Uh, Ford is nine years old, I believe. And it's Dave and, ha Dave, not and Heidi, God, please. Dave and Rachel's child. And for one time, he had a show with Dave called Ford for Thought. It was a bad show, not because of Ford. Ford was the best part of it, but Dave was not listening. He was texting on his phone during the conversations. Ford was trying to get his attention the whole time. It was really, really not a good show. I've done videos about it. It's like kind of like a year ago videos. Um, if you want to watch that and be horrified. But Dave likes to uh, exploit the younger children. That seems to be the, 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 the school of exploiting your children for Instagram uh, course that Heidi could put together um, really is exploit the younger ones first because the younger ones are less likely to say anything about it. Once they become teenagers, they're like, get this camera out of my face. But when they're young, they're more willing to please. So Dave's gonna now uh, show his son uh, interacting with a fellow classmate, docks her entire address and, um, you know, just humiliate his son to his nearly half a million followers. And I don't think humiliate's the right word. There's no like, humiliation, but like his son is going to hang out with a girl and now it's been blasted on the internet, uh, for, for entertainment purposes, because these kids, uh, personal lives don't matter because they're kids apparently to these wonderful parents. Uh, it says Ford has two big items on his summer bucket list. Number one, painting a mural on a wall in his room. Uh, Ford Hollis and I are uh, doing a memory making summer thing. What are we doing? Uh, I'm going on like a little, a little hangout with my friend. A little hangout with your friend and Little hangout with his friend. Okay, there you go. That's what he wants to call it. He's nine years old. That's what it is, Dave. And Dave is going to facetiously say, oh, it's a date. It's not a date. It's not a date. It's a girl. It's a girl. It's a girl. I, I find this interesting that he doesn't do this with his son, who Rachel now has confirmed is gay. He doesn't show, oh, you're hanging out with the boy. You're hanging out with the boy. You're hanging out with the boy. But because Ford, I guess, he's assuming that he's a straight child, it's okay to make these insinuations. Oh, you hang out with a girl, but it's not a date. Oh, it's like, why, why? 
But anyways, uh, Dave says, when someone tells you unsolicitedly 64 times that it's just a friend hangout, but also asks 900 times when we're leaving, it's definitely just a couple of friends hanging out. Maybe because you are never there, Dave. So he wants to make sure you're not going to go on a plane to meet Heidi in between uh, you saying, yeah, let's go to the movies and you actually going. You ever think of that? Okay. Uh, this friend happens to be a... Girl. She happens to be a girl. It doesn't matter if she was a boy or a girl because it's not a date. It's just two friends just hanging out. Hanging out yeah. It's just two friends hanging out. What, what are we going to see? Uh, okay, we get it, Dave. You think it's so hilarious. You think it's so funny. Cool. Uh, Thor, Love and Thunder. Thor, Love and Thunder. The fourth Thor movie? Yeah. You're a huge Thor connoisseur. Oh, okay. I mean, if you haven't seen Thor Ragnarok, I give it 100 stars. Are you ready? He does not look in, interested in this recording. Okay, here's the house where he's picking up his friend in case you wanted to go drop by and uh, say hi. <laughs> he's going to creepily, uh, you know, just record this person's house. I am dying. Bless this precious boy's heart. The 10-year-old crush game is giving me life. Uh-oh, we know we have to say that. It's giving me life. The I don't know what this means. The 10-year-old crush game is giving me life. That doesn't even make sense, Dave. Also, this is just a couple of friends hanging out. Okay, that's exactly how him and Heidi describe their relationship. We're just a, we're just buddies. We're just friends. We're just hanging out. It's like, okay, cool. But like also your son's 10 and is young and is a child. So I want you to just get off the fucking phone and spend time with them no okay cool just 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 you know continue to embarrass him nah. oops sorry uh okay we're not gonna play that so he's waiting okay the mother's there of course we have to have that interaction for no reason the result of honoring the request for the rest of the crew to ride in a separate car and see minions instead of thor probably because they didn't want to be recorded on dave's instagram meanwhile there they are no such luck. There they are. He's going to be recorded. They're going to be recorded <laughs> from afar. What time does your start? <laughs> okay. Session one, friends only in Thor while this crew sees minions. Session two, friends head home with Noah for bed when Pop arrives with Jackson for their double bill with Thor. Session three, Noah sleeps, four journals, dad naps, all the moving parts. Let the show begin. Okay, and then we at least we put an emoji over this girl's face, but, you know, it's the least he could do. <laughs> and what a pointless photo. And also, if my dad did that or my mom did that and took a picture of anyone that I'm going to any function with at 10 years old without my express consent and want, no. That's an N-O from me. That's an N-O from Emmy. Any hooser. Um, yeah, that, that's why. That's about it. Uh, I'll ask again. Is there anything that I missed? I see your comments coming in. I appreciate them. I appreciate them. Yeah, th that's, that's the juicy stuff that I grabbed. Um, and like I said, I was sort of busy, you know, living. <laughs> Just kidding. Six things I hate about myself. Number one, I just live too hard. Number two, I travel too much. Number three, I make way too much money. Number four, I have the best fans. Number five, I, I am too satisfied in my life. <laughs> Number six, I worship the devil. <laughs> just throw it in there at the end. <laughs> oh... Lordy, I want to, and Dave has been like mailing it in, by the way, with, um, he's got his rise together podcast. The last few episodes have been like recuts or like re, you know, rebroadcasts as they say. Um, I think he, I don't even listen to them. Like I already, they say it like, this is the top moments like for, um, pride month. He like pulled some old clips of people who are from the LGBTQ plus community and said like, this is my contribution as an ally. Uh, <laughs> here's some old shit that, you know, I hobbled together. Um, 
Oh, which LaCroix is that? Pamplemousse, I think. That's not mine. That's that's Rachel's from five years ago. Number eight, Tara was too cute. I know. She's she's in my eyesight right now, sleeping. She's adorable. I'm too entertaining. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, so we checked on Rage Talk, you know. She's not selling those tickets. Uh, predictions are still being um, accepted. If you'd like to guess whether she will continue on with the show or not. Says he's going to have free time. Maybe Sean Mendes will start performing at Rich Talk Live. That makes sense. He's available now. Maybe one big tour was too much. Now he needs to perform for 15 people in Birmingham. And that will do the trick. Here's a reminder for Dave. Turns out you can have a full life without putting it all on social media. There, there we go once again. Um, yeah, I think Rachel is going to do Rach Talk Live. I think Dave is going to sell 15 copies of the book, and then they're both going to reevaluate <laughs> in January and decide, okay, what are we doing? Or some other big controversy will happen, and then we'll, we'll find that out. But anyways, um, if you have more free time, and you can't get enough content and you want to be uh, talking about um, Rachel still tangentially. Uh, I posted that video yesterday called, and I'll show you. I'll show you exactly what it looks like so there's no confusion. Not that there would be, but just in case. A little self-promotion. A little self-promo. And I, I will say, it was hard for me to read this book. Not really. But it was annoying. This book sucks. The book sucked. If you're expecting a good review, you ain't gonna get it. Uh, yeah, it's called You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay is Unhinged. Hold on. And proof that Rachel endorsed this dumb book. Wait. It's coming. Wait. <laughs> Everyone's like, what is the point of this? I don't know. There it is. It's got to be 25 years old, and it is still so good. And this book is surprisingly god awful batshit crazy. <laughs> it is. So that's a good promo. <laughs> If you wanna if you wanna hear all the crazy shit in this book that Rachel Hawes allegedly loves, uh, that is up for your viewing pleasure. All right, everybody. I'm gonna go eat lunch. We'll keep it we'll keep it short and sweet, and then we'll be back. And on Thursday, if you want to go uh, learn about Lewis Howes, our our resident uh, friend of the show, Lewis Howes, he's not really a friend of the show, he's a he's a school of greatness uh, person who has platformed a lot of these peeps. And the more I, I learn... ...or wacky. And um, this is him. We're going to be talking about him on Cringe Fluencers on Thursday, noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and then also, I am currently, thanks to the patrons over on Patreon, <clears throat> um, if you're here from that, if you're a patron... Uh, right now thank you very much and if you'd like to become a patron there's a link in the description below and if you'd like to make live streams like this i have a link to my an affiliate link to the program that i use and you can learn how to do it too um that's all in the description below but uh on patreon they selected uh jay shetty as the next victim <laughs> as the next person to cover on this channel. So uh, I deliver. So I've, I'm deep in the throes of research there, and it's going to be juicy. If you like Jay Shetty, you ain't going to like him after this video. And if you do, then I don't know. That's weird because it's crazy. It's sort of crazy how bad it is. And he's sort of improved possibly a little, but... The bar of where this guy has succeeded, like his actual ability versus the success that he's received is insanity. It's almost like Rachel Hollis levels. They're really similar in a lot of ways, to be honest. The plagiarism, off the charts. <laughs> Anyways, that's what I'm working on. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining. I know it was a little earlier than usual, but I like this.
It's going to be good. It's going to be a good time to mix it up. Mix it up. And one more for the road. Why do you follow me if you don't already own my book? Why do you? <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. It's good seeing you. I haven't seen. I actually don't. I only see your, your uh, profile pictures, but it was good to see those. <laughs> love and light. I love and light to you. Bye. <laughs>